Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast to help you with CSS Grid. And here we are at w3schools.com and you can go in here and search for anything that you want, any HTML element, attribute, CSS property. It's also great for JavaScript and some other web programming languages. But when we learn Grid, look at all the individual little lessons on Grid properties. So there are a lot of them. The main thing we need to understand about grid, however, is that it builds a two-dimensional table. And a table has both columns and rows. Flexbox, as you remember, is just a one-dimensional box. Now things can be wrapping in the box in Flexbox, but it's just one box. In CSS grid, we have multiple rows and multiple columns. So it's great for laying out the entire web page. Now within one of those intersections, you can have a flex box if you want, but that's the big thing to remember right off the bat is that the grid is a two dimensional flexible table and the flex box is just one box that you're aligning items inside of. Now, one way they're similar is they both have to have a container. So when you come to w3schools.com, you'll always see the container element and then the grid is described. And let's go to the try it yourself and we'll see here's our grid container. Here are our grid items, one through six. And here's how the grid has been defined. It's display grid on the outer div. And then the grid has been defined as 150 px, 150 pixels, slash, auto, auto, auto. So that means the first row is 150 pixels tall, and all three columns are automatically taking up the same amount of space. So the first measurement is always about the row, and the second measurement is always about the number of columns. So now I want to switch to chapter eight in your Pacific Trails Resort project and talk about your style sheet. So again, we know that we're doing a mobile first style sheet here. So all of our global styles that apply to all screens, including mobile, would be at the top, followed by our medium size that we will add into the style sheet when our minimum width reaches a size greater than 600 pixels. So most of these styles are in addition to the global styles. Some of them do replace the global styles. And in that case, when we get to tablet, we're going to make the nav UL section flexible and flex our items inside of it. And we're also going to make our main section in the content class flexible as a grid. And those styles are given to you in the book, so I'm not going to go over them very thoroughly. I want to roll down here to the large screen and the goal of these media queries is to make sure that the web page looks great at every size. And here I've got it at mobile size, which the only styles that would apply are the global ones. And then if we make the green tablet size, now our tablet media query is kicking in. And of course, when we go to full screen size, we want these two columns, which makes it look better on a large computer screen. So let's examine the large screen media query and the book will have you make the nav UL a flex box and flex its direction into a column. And that is this section right here. That's inside the grid though, because the grid starts with the wrapper in display grid. And it's got these one, two, three, four, five, major wireframe sections, including the nav, inside the grid. So for large screen size, you're actually putting a flex box inside a grid cell. So again, for both flex box and grid, it all starts out with a container. And in this case, our wrapper is our container. And that's why I've been imploring you to use really good indentation on your HTML so that you can see the wrapper. And here's my wrapper. It starts right after the body starts. It closes right before the body closes. And here are the one, two, three, four, five big sections of my wireframe that I am then going to define one, two, three, four, five inside my grid. And so it even helps you if you indent those items inside the wrapper because white space, as you know, you can use to your advantage for readability 
in both HTML and CSS. So here's my container, the wrapper. I'm going to display it as a grid. And then the next thing you have to do is define your columns and your rows for your grid with the grid template columns and grid template rows properties. And the reason we have two values here for columns is because we want two columns. And we want to specify that at large screen size, our first column is 180 pixels, and then the second column will just automatically be as large as it needs to be to accommodate the content. For our rows, we don't want to have any hard specifications. We want all of our rows to be automatically as tall as they need to be to accommodate the content. And then we pick through the five pieces of our wireframe. Our header is right up here with Pacific Trails Resort. And it helps then to look at your figure 8.56 and see that the top of the header is row one. The left edge of the wrapper is column one. So the header is going from row one to row two and then column one to column. See how we have two columns here? So it's going co from column line one to column line three. It's, it's spanning two columns. And that's exactly what these measurements are saying. You know how many rows tall it is. You just have to see the difference between row line one and row line two. That's one. Two minus one is one. And so here's row line one at the top and row line two. Columns, it's starting with the first column, which is the first column far on the left. That's column line one, column line two, and column line three. So the header is going across both of those columns, hence starts at column line one and goes all the way over to the right to column line three. The nav is a little bit more tricky. It starts with row line two, which is right here. One's at the top, there's two. It's starting with two and it's going all the way down to row line five. Row line five is the bottom of the screen. And how do we know that it's five? Well, we're counting one, two, three, four for the footer and five. And so you might not know what that number is until you get the rest of the grid laid in. But we have four total rows here, and we want the nav to go from rows two through five. We want the nav to span these three rows, the div row, the main row, and the footer row. That's three rows, two through five. Its column is just one column. We want it to start with column number one and end with column number two. So it stays in that first column. On the div element, which they use in the Pacific Trails project for this big hero background image, you're not going to do that on your final project. You're going to use the image tag for your content. But it, for this particular project, they have coded this div to start at row two, which is after the header, end at row three. And it also starts at column two and goes to the end, which is column three. And that's how that's coded. For your main section, that's your third row. It starts at row three, ends at row four. Here's our main section. It starts at column two, goes to column three, just like the div with the hero image in it. And then the footer is our last row. It starts at row four, which you cannot see that line very good because of the way both the nav and the main are styled with the background. But row four would start right before the footer starts ends at the very bottom, and also spans that second column. So hopefully that explanation helps you understand these numbers, helps you understand how you can use indentation and white space to help read this, and also helps explain a flexible grid that you're going to want to apply to your final project. Thank you.